in the past, I have come on super upset and fussing, but I have been told, let me put my AirPods in, and more loving and understand that people only know what they know. So understand I'm using great restraint right now. The way that I can express the way I feel, the how I how I can express the way I feel is I feel very protective. My heart feels very protective. I'm extremely protective of women and I'm extremely protective of men. I'm very protective of humankind. I'm an empath and so I can feel emotions. It goes beyond like wanting to care. Like I genuinely could cry right now. I was so grieved by the reaction that my last post got that those of you who are prayers, please pray for me. Send good vibes, whatever. Oh, how cute. Sending good vibes from New Orleans. Thank you. I will take that. So please understand my emotion. In the past, it has come across as judgment when I am, you know, upset. But there's a word for it. It's called righteous indignation. And so <sighs> help me, Lord, to say this calmly. So I don't want to offend anyone. There's a post that I put up. Right? Care enough to be concerned about us, number one, but then care enough to seek to understand us, right, as men, then care enough to not dismiss our feelings. Okay. Right? So start with care. That's the biggest thing is, is start with care. Make it matter to you. It's, it's got to matter to you, right, as a woman, as a, as a wife, as a girlfriend, as a mom. It's got to matter to you how your son, your husband, um, your brother, it's got to matter to you how they feel. You see what I mean? Not how they perform. Mm. Mm. See, what matters to most people in the world is their own ego. Yeah. Their own problems. For sure. Right? So all I'm asking you to do is care. And I think if we if we could just, just do that at a base level, then I think we get somewhere, right? Because more healed men produce less broken women. Ooh, so um, but the reactions that were elicited by that post, and this is not trying to bash these people, this is a teaching opportunity, but the reactions that I saw genuinely, like I, I actually feel like a piercing feeling in my chest. It's, it's this pain, it's grief. <sighs> Just like men don't like to go to the doctor, it's the same with their mental health and the women in their lives make them go to the doctor. So it's the same with healing. If we love them, we will help them heal. I like that attitude. The reactions that I got, I wrote some of them down, okay? And you'll understand, I'm sure, why this was very triggering. He better get therapy. So the reaction to knowing that a man is, is going through trauma is that he better go get therapy. Again, this is, the, this is under the heading of how women can help men heal, okay? Not against therapy. I, what I do is a form of therapy for people. It's just, I don't have a therapist license, but I, I coach women through and I help them understand and work through the things that they're going through. So clearly I have nothing against therapy. But when that's the knee jerk reaction to how women can help the men in their lives heal, he better go to therapy it shows me that I have job security. We'll just put a positive spin on it. I have job security. There will be a need for what I do for a very long time if that's the first reaction that comes to mind from a woman. That's actually very masculine energy, if I really wanna be honest. And there's nothing wrong with masculine energy. There's nothing wrong with feminine energy. When it becomes a matter of right and wrong is when you use it at inappropriate times. So if you're in the boardroom, you're making decisions, you're picking a college, you're studying to go to school, masculine energy, great. When someone is broken before you and you tell them, you better go take care of that, that is masculine energy. That is nothing nurturing. Feminine energy is nurturing. Feminine energy says, I don't have a degree in psychology and I'll help you find a good therapist, but you know what? 
What can I do in the meantime? That's like somebody bleeding out in front of me. I don't have any sort of medical background. I mean, I know that you would have put pressure on the wound, but it's like, you better call 911 because you got a problem there. Woo! Oh, yeah. Your arm's severed right off. You, you really got a problem there, husband. What am I going to be doing? In addition to calling 911, I'm going to be putting pressure on the wound. I am going to be like asking, can I do anything? Can I, like, I'm going to be beside myself trying to figure out what I can do to help alleviate the pain until the professional comes. Because if you've ever called 911 or the police, it could be 30 minutes, okay? It could be a good, good bit of time before they come. How cute. <laughs> she said two of her favorites are going live at the same time. You're so cute. Um, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's, it's not the therapy that's the issue. Really hear me. This is why I'm trying to really watch my tone of voice because in the past, I've seemed like I was condemning somebody and that's not the intention. The intention is to educate. So I don't want to make this about me and then the message get lost. It's like, who does she think she is calling me out? It's not about saying it's bad to, to, to suggest therapy for someone. It's about understanding what role you can have in the process. That's why I'm giving this example. I don't have medical healing. I don't, I don't have medical, um, I don't have medical training, but nobody has to train me on how to be empathetic. If somebody were a stranger were to drop down in front of me, I am going to do something that's like bedside manner, they say, before the paramedics come. So if my entire reaction is, oh man, your arm got cut off, you better call an ambulance, that shows a lack of empathy. That's the point, my loves. That's the point. That is the point. And this isn't to shame people. This is to educate people. So, I love it. Like Tay said, it's the way you say it that's it's what's offensive. She said, I've had friends say it to me as if therapy was bad. This is what I want you guys to understand. And please, the women on here, please listen to me. Please listen to me. If you... We're privy to the conversations that I've had with men. When we go into private spaces, when we have conversation where there aren't women around and the men feel totally safe, you would be crying right now if you could hear what men say. What men say is, we feel like we are walking ATMs. We feel like our entire value is attached to how much monetary value that we have. How much money is in our bank account? What kind of resources can we provide? It feels like I'm not even a person. Thank you, Sierra. There are people who I personally know, who I am friends with, who have contemplated whether it would be more beneficial for that person to be dead and physically away from his family because what that would mean financially for them because of insurance. Multiple men have said that. Multiple, actually the second guy I could think of, and he said the reason why he didn't is because he's in accounting and he knows how legal legal things can get messed up. And he's like, if I if I do this, what if my family gets tied up in the legal part of it and, and they don't even get the money and now I did it all up for nothing. But the fact that they're even contemplating this is killing me. No amount of money should be worth my partner dying. I don't care if I have to take on a job or two or three. If my partner ever thought I would be better served by having a bigger number in my bank account than him being around? Whoa, that's a problem. I try to use comparisons so that we can get out of ourselves and into someone else's shoes because that's what creates empathy, okay? As women, how would you feel if every time a man saw you, he saw a rack and a behind, a rack and a behind and a hole, a rack and a behind and a hole, a rack and a behind? 
No cares about your your goals and dreams and your comfort and your your emotions. You're a rack, a booty, and a hole. Oh, I need something. Let me stick it in the hole. I'm bored. Let me grab the rack. Let me grab it. You would feel so, what is the word? You would feel so objectified. And what do you feel inside? I'm a, I'm a soul. I'm a, I'm a person with feelings. Like, I'm, yeah, I got a hot rack and I got a really nice tail back there. And my hole is, you know, <laughs> whoppy. But I'm so much more than that. If you were able to give somebody a lie detector test when you were getting to know each other and you said, do you see me as just my physical body? And they were like, yep. Nobody in their right mind would choose to go forward with that person. But what happens with a lot of women is that they look at a man and say, what resources can he provide? What lifestyle can he afford me? I will pick him. And the men are not stupid. They can tell. There have been so many posts when it comes to Valentine's Day. Oh, what should we get? They don't even know what to buy the men on their birthdays or Valentine's Day or Christmas because they haven't even taken the time to get to know these people. Are there no problems when it comes to men? Of course not. But right now we're talking about women. The men are hurting inside. And this is why when you compare men and women, it is staggering how many more men kill themselves. There was a guy, um, I forget his name because I don't listen to rap. Kevin Gates. I had to like look at the name on, like it kind of could picture it in my head. Kevin Gates is his name. I haven't heard of him before, but his video just broke my heart. And I posted one of his videos. He said, I've never told anybody this, but I wanted to it came out in an interview as part of a bigger story. And he said he planned on killing himself. This was, I think, a couple years back. And he said because he just felt like uh, he was just a resource. He just felt like a resource. He felt like if he did anything, it was like, well, that's what you're supposed to do. Like, duh. And even though, yeah, like that's what a man is supposed to do, provide and protect, it's okay to say thank you and show gratitude. Like, <laughs> I promise you. You could say that, you know, a woman's role is to have kids. That's why the Lord put a hole in her to let babies pop out. Okay, you could say that. But ladies, how would you feel if you put your actual life on the line? Because labor is putting your life on the line. You you go nine months of discomfort and then you your body changes after you go through all that and the guy's like what that's what you're supposed to do anyways what's for dinner you'd be like are you freaking kidding me am i with a psychopath and if he was like well that's what you're designed to do it's okay for us it's okay for us to express love so when I see the sentiment, oh, that person should just go get therapy, the bigger picture is being missed. The reason why this man is in need of therapy is because of women. Just like there are so many women who need therapy because of men. When we don't get it right, when we don't love each other properly, it leads to trauma. I don't care if the person who didn't love me right was a relative. It could have been my father. It could have been my brother. It could have been my neighbor. But a man not loving me right results in human, the human world. It results in trauma. A mother not treating her son right results in trauma. A first girlfriend who doesn't treat her boyfriend right results in trauma. A teacher not treating children right results in trauma. When two people interact in a way that is not loving, it results in trauma. The levels are different, but they're all trauma. So yes, you could go into a clinical environment and get therapy. However, supplementally, we can also love people back to health. 
okay? There is a balance that is needed. I would never discourage someone from taking therapy. I actually heard somebody say something and at first I was like, ah, and then I was like, oh, that actually makes sense. They said, I recommend when people do marriage counseling, one person has a therapist that's totally separate from your spouse and the other person has their own therapist because there's some stuff that you, it doesn't need to be laid on your, your spouse. And I was thinking like, well, what, you know, what stuff should they not hear? And actually, now that I think about it, you know, when I really stopped to think about it, I was like, there is some private stuff that are kind of like your own personal demons that you really don't need to let out, you know, perfect example. Let's just say a guy is really struggling because his secretary is so hot. He's not going to cheat, but he's really struggling. And maybe he's, he feels like the spirit of lust. And he's like, I don't know what to do. I probably wouldn't want to know that as the husband, as the wife, I probably wouldn't want to know that him to work that out with his his therapist you know the the spiritual learn leader or whatever and figure out how to get that spirit of lust because guess what that's going to trigger an insecurity in me so there are some things that i believe it's better to just kind of work out your demons but use common sense when it comes to that okay um but i believe that when you are loved properly organically healing begins. Just last night, I was doing my live stream and there was a beautiful soul in there. His his name is Jerome. He's somebody I've known for years. And just hearing him explain what his relationship was like with his now wife, hearing him explain what the dynamics of their marriage is. This is, I think, I don't know how long, they've been together a long time. You could literally see healing just kind of come over some of the women's faces because they had not seen that before. If you haven't seen or heard something, you can't imagine. And imagination is what leads to hope. And I told him, you have restored hope for some people. They were saying things, they went from saying those men don't exist to, oh my goodness, I can't wait to meet a man like that. That's healing, you guys. Healing looks different. It's all different shapes and sizes. But when you contribute to somebody's pain or you do nothing to help you are part of the problem and what happens is we have two human beings that hurt each other and don't love each other properly then they go out into the world and then what do they say well i don't want to have be be used again i don't want to be mistreated again so you know what i'm going to be preemptive in my strike and they go out and they begin to use people the woman says This man didn't respect me for my body. Therefore, I'm just going to use him for his resources. The guy says, she only used me for my resources. So you know what? No more love. I'm going to use women for their body. Now you've just introduced a whole new set of people who never even asked for this. You're, You're paying back the universe, but you're paying back the wrong person. That new person, that new guy, that new girl had nothing to do with it. So now you just infected Two new people who before that were innocent. They were like, oh, love looks like this and love looks like that. And then they think they have love. And all of a sudden it was like, God. And they're like, oh, I guess love isn't real. Now you have two more infected people. Now those new two infected people, they go out. Do you see how exponentially then you have this toxic world? And then we have the nerve to say that the dating pool is peeing it. Yes, because you're taking bowel movements in it every day. You. But you want to act like someone else needs to come clean the pool. Where's the pool? Where's the pool, man? It's boo-boo. You need to stop pooing in it. Because even if you found a new, beautiful, pristine pool that had never been used, by the time you're in it for a few days, that thing is murky again. You got diarrhea, emotional diarrhea. (laughs) But it's easier to project and say that it's their problem. Sometimes helping our hurting men to heal could strictly be being still with him. Oh, being quiet. Oh, listening to him. Oh, and making him a sandwich. That's not what she said. She said preparing a meal. But you know, my daughter the other day, um, she was not feeling well at all. And she's just, I could tell she wanted to cry. I said, let it out, baby. Let it out, right? That's the nurturing side. And you just see these warm tears just come down her face. 
And I'm just holding her and she's like, I'm so hungry. I said, you want mommy to make you a sandwich? She said, yeah. She was in so much pain. That sandwich wasn't just a sandwich. I've made her sandwiches before. That sandwich was love on a plate. That was love between two slices of bread. She just started crying even more. Because in that moment, it was like, my mom loves me so much. She knows I could go make the sandwich myself. But she sees I'm in so much pain that she's getting up from her comfortable spot on the couch to go make the sandwich for me. It's deeper than the turkey. It's deeper than the lettuce and the tomato and the mayo. Yes, I eat mayo. And the bread. It's the representation. So maybe you don't have that therapy degree, but you have two hands. You got arms. And you could hold him. I don't even know what to say right now, baby, but it's going to be all right. We're going to figure this out together. I, 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 don't, I don't know what to say when you lose somebody, but, I, you know, put your head in my lap. I'm going to rub your head. Don't judge me, Kyle, the male. <laughs> I love that. Uh, Mr. Brian says we have to be the change we want to see. Yes. Show up in a healthy way. And show the people we interact with that healthy, positive dating and communication is possible. 100%. The ladies really, really bristled. A lot of ladies really bristled when I did the post saying, when men are ready to get married, this is what they look for. And they, some people were like, oh, they just want like a pet or they just want this like, you know, they heard these attributes and they saw them as like, belittling of women you know she knows when to be quiet she knows when to speak she's kind she's soft-spoken it's not about i don't know what is being conjured in the person's mind when they read it because to me that just sounds like a beautiful person it sounds like goals <laughs> for me i want to be compassionate and kind and soft it's just an energy that men need the world is cruel and cold and combative and hostile and so when he comes home he wants proverbially, emotionally, to sink into a bed of pillows. He doesn't want to lay down on a piece of wood or a pile of rocks. And some energy is like a pile of rocks or a bunch of steel beams. When you are soft, when you are kind, even when you're misunderstanding each other and you're having a disagreement, I'm telling you this, and I'm not saying you should manipulate, okay? But I'm just saying, if you understood feminine energy, y'all, we would be some dangerous mamajamas. But what do you think elicits more of a reaction? He says something that pisses me off, and I'm like, you bleep, 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 rah! That's one option, okay? Or the other option is slow tear as I continue to cook his meal. I'm quiet. I hand him his favorite meal. I kiss him on his forehead and I walk away. What do you think is more powerful? If I do the first thing, they're, ah, I equate that to a lion. Well, I bite his head off and he's going to defend himself. Defensiveness looks like screaming back at me, calling me out of my name. And if he doesn't have self-control, possibly putting his hands on me, not condoning it. But when it escalates to a certain point, some, some, some men don't know how to control themselves physically. Some, not saying it's okay. I'm just giving you facts. When you have wrath, wrath for some people, they don't know how to control it. They can physically take it out on you. That's why with men, they know if it gets to a certain boiling point, oh, get ready. Because it's, oh man, they about to, they about to throw hands. Because they understand. That's how men let it out a lot of times, okay? If they don't know how else to channel that energy. So you're a woman and you push that wrong dude over that edge. <laughs> you're going to find out what his tipping point is. But the first reaction, that's a lion. Arr! And if a lion roars at you, you're going to protect yourself. You're going to get a shotgun. You're going to do something. Or you're going to run away, right? <laughs> but if you come in like a kitty cat. Who doesn't like a cute little kitty cat? Look at the little, the little guy in Shrek, right? With the big old saucer eyeballs. And he's like, women need to understand you can get the response that you want. You can get the results that you want. 
but you are powerful in your kitten energy. Arr, not in your lion energy. Lion energy is when you're out trying to buy a car and you don't want to be taken advantage from the sales guy. Pull your fangs out all you want. Claw his eyes out if you want. I don't care. Somebody tries to mess with your baby cubs, pull that energy out. Arr, claws out. I don't care. But when it comes to your partner, <laughs> when it comes to your partner, you better be a pussycat, if you feel what I'm saying. You can manipulate, it doesn't have to be a bad word. Manipulate means to achieve the desired outcome. You can do things in a way to achieve a desired outcome. You can get the same outcome without collateral damage. And I don't even say the same desired outcome. You don't usually get the desired outcome in the first scenario. When you're in your, your lion lioness energy, it repels. He's either going to jump in a safari vehicle and drive as far away from you as he can, or he's going to remember that he's a lion and he's going to go back at you. Either one is not good. You made him bolt or you got into a fight. Who wants that? So that second scenario where I allow the tear to come out because I'm really, really hurt. That's what I'm feeling because we only act in anger because anger feels like a more powerful feeling than the hurt. But anger, there's never anger without hurt somewhere in there. Usually. So if you allow that hurt to show and you calmly express or you get so quiet that he will ask you, babe, What's wrong? Your energy changed. And then you could say, you know what? When you made that comment about my weight, it really stung. I've really been struggling with it. I've been really trying to, you know, get my eating right. And when you made that comment, it just, uh, it just, it really hurt me. How different would that reaction be than you popping back? Oh, I know you're not talking about my weight. Look at your big old belly. I, da, 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 da. You're going to evoke the lion. So now you're letting him know, I know, you're, I, know, I know you didn't mean anything by it, but it really hurt. Now he has a chance to even see what he did. His pride and anger is not provoked. All he's left with now is conviction. He feels terrible. And before you say, no, he wouldn't care, uh, you're the one who picked him. Why are you picking a person who is not sympathetic and empathetic? Usually when you pick a person like that, it's because you rushed through the process of getting to know each other. Well, why did you rush through the process of getting to know each other? Because you had a spirit of desperation. Why do you think I harp on a spirit of desperation all the time? Because it's the foundation to most problems for women. This stuff is so simple, but it's so easy to overlook. Most people are so stuck on what they know logically, what they've learned in school, and they have no idea about the spirit realm. And before anyone thinks this is about religion, I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about the spirit realm, the laws of the spirit. If you don't understand the laws of the spirit, laws of, of you know nature would be like gravity. That's a law. There are laws in the spirit. If you put this plus this, like oil and water, don't mix. If you put a light, a match and, and gasoline, there's the same thing that happens in the spirit realm. But if you never take the time to study the spirit realm, the laws of the spirit realm, you are going to be striking a match and, and putting it in a place that is doused with, with, with a gasoline. And you're going to be like, Oh, why did that happen? I don't, I don't understand. That same match would be a uh, get a fire going to keep you warm reason so you got to understand you got to understand the spirit realm you have to understand what's happening because we are all spirits 
That's why people talk about, oh, his energy was off. and this Because we are spirits. You could feel someone's spirit. You could feel their energy. This thing is just not letting me charge. Hang on, guys. Let me get a different one because it's going to die if I don't. But this is why I'm spending so much time teaching people about the spirit realm on Thursday nights. This is our third week that we're doing um, our study. But that's happening on Thursdays because the more you understand, the, wor the more you can do things that are in your best interest. Um, some men are so broken that they cannot properly receive the pure kindness of women. Some of us will be empathetic, wanting nothing in, in return. Um, I definitely think that a lot of guys have PTSD. I really, I, I totally agree. A lot of men have PTSD and they're like turtles. Same with women. They're like turtles who've retreated into their shell. They're going to have to see something over an extended period of time before they feel like it's safe enough to poke their little turtle heads out. Because in the past, they have maybe seen kindness that was just a trap. Oh, she's being kind. She's being empathetic. For what? Until she can use me? So it, if you are a genuine woman who is genuinely being benevolent for the sake of being benevolent, it is going to take patience because it's going to take time. It's like a woman who's been physically assaulted. Uh a man might be just trying to put his arm around her, but she might flinch. That's just her, that's her trauma. She has PTSD. It's going to take a while for her to be able to get to the point where she can even have intercourse with a man again, because there's so much trauma associated with it. So we have to be gentle. We have to understand that almost every single person has trauma, just, just different degrees of it. Um, so I was saying that one of the responses was, you know, he needs to go to therapy um, somebody else said, you know, I'm not helping a man heal unless I'm getting paid for it. That, that reaction is the fear of almost all men. We all fear different things, but at the end of the day, the root of the fear is that we are not going to be loved for who we are as a spirit. And if somebody says, because this is a scenario we're talking about with, with your partner or somebody that's in your life romantically. If your attitude is, unless I'm getting paid to do the work of a therapist, I don't want to contribute to your healing journey. I have had people, men, who just in dating them have helped me. Even if they never even knew they were helping me. By them being good people and by them doing things that I could see, it made me realize what was out there and it showed me a better way. I remember one guy, he never would complain and it was never a topic that we talked about. It just, I just realized one day I was like, dude, this guy never complains. And it made me look at myself and I was like, oh, you kind of complain a lot. And even though we didn't end up together, it profoundly affected me it it made me heal that area of my life which was discontent and so all of our relationships whether they're romantic or not it could be a classmate it could be a parent child it could be a neighbor all of our relationships should be opportunities to show each other love every single encounter should be an opportunity to show each other love that's why it's so dangerous to have a mindset of that's a stranger i don't know them Am I saying you need to let perfect strangers come in and have access to your house? No, it's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying there should be a certain level of decorum, a certain level of baseline that you look out for that person. And it might sound so silly to say, but like people who litter, this is what bugs me with littering. You are so self-centered that you don't care that what you littered, what where you littered is someone else's like city. People who walk through this neighborhood, people who live in these houses, they have to see it. You, you're passing through, so I don't care. <laughs> Throw it out the window. Or I just finished eating, I just let it fly to the floor. That is a level of self-centeredness that is just repulsive to me. I only care about my little bubble. And I don't care about anybody else. But will be the first person offended if someone does something to your house. Someone came into your yard and threw their soda can in your yard. You'd be looking for that person, but you don't feel bad about doing it in the street. 
So somebody says that the sentiment sounds like if they don't seek help or healing for themselves, it's not on me to fix them. It's not on anyone to fix anyone, period. Thank you for saying that, Brian. Just to make this very clear, it is nobody's responsibility to fix someone else, period. I want to put a real big pause after that period, period. It is not your responsibility. It is love that motivates you to still want to try. If I see my neighbor struggling to carry groceries to you know their front door, it's not my responsibility. They are a whole adult. They could do it themselves. They should do it themselves. But my humanity makes me see that person in need, realize that I am capable of helping in some way, and offer that. That is love. When you do what you don't have to do, simply because you want to help someone else. So am I talking about putting yourself in a situation where you're getting you know, emotionally abused or something because this person won't do the work? No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about how do you create a safe space to where that person feels like they are uh, loved and safe. I just want people to remember that as humans, we are the ones that cause the trauma. And even though, let's just say I'm dating Mr. X, even though I'm not the woman who traumatized him, I'm still a woman, which means that I can help undo what she did. We have to start to look at each other as our brothers and sisters in humanity. If we don't see ourselves connected in some way, we will continue to act so selfishly. And the end result of selfishness is destruction. Self-destruction and destruction of the community. If I'm a man and I just keep seeing women as objects for my pleasure, and I totally disregard their spirits, their experiences, their hopes, their dreams, their emotions, I am going to ruin all the women who I come across. And if as a woman, I, for whatever reason, don't care to love on men, but instead use them to get me to where I need to go financially or open doors or use them in whatever way, resources, I'm going to potentially ruin all the men I come across. I'm going to leave a wake, in my wake, a bunch of people who are hurt. Now those people need to go to therapy and they're going to have a little bit of PTSD for their next relationship. We have to do better. And if you're not a loving person, if you're not a joyful person, if you're not a peaceful person, I'm not going to judge you. Because how can you pour something out of a cup if it's not in there to begin with? If you do not open your mouth and love pours out, if you do not live a life where joy is exuded, if you do not have an experience of peace, that means it's not in you to begin with. I can't be mad at you for not giving it to me, but I'm finna to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you because the only way that you can actually get that stuff is to get in contact with the source of it. God is love. The characteristic of him is peace. A characteristic of him is joy. And by nature, if you get close enough to him, you will have it. It's like a contact high. It is the contact high. She said, love is an action and it doesn't mean we as ladies are being pushed over or weak. Yes, pushovers are weak. Instead, it takes optimum strength to be loving to your man. Yes, yes, it does. When you are giving something that you're not getting back, that is the ultimate strength. And the only way you can have that strength is if you have his strength. I get my love supply from God. Therefore, whatever you human do to me, I'm good. 
I'm overflowing before I even came in front of you. <laughs> I went to the source directly first thing in the morning. So by the time I talk to you at 10 o'clock, I already am overflowing. So whatever you take from me, you're taking it from the saucer below my teacup. <laughs> I, I, you never took from my original eight ounces. I stay at eight ounces and overflowing because I only need my eight ounces. But God gives me the excess to overflowing and I just give to you guys out of the saucer. So I'll be sipping my, my little tea all day long. My love, joy, peace tea. And whatever falls down excess, have at it. I, whether you take it or not, it's there. I'm not measuring how much I'm getting from you and how much you're giving to me. It's just, this is, there's just extra down there. So if you have feelings of hostility, if when you see someone hurting, your thought is to send them away instead of hold them closer, you might need to tap in a little more. Tap in a little more. Get you some more love, boo-boo. So you can squeeze that out of you. I want people to stop feeling so discouraged. And every single day without fail, there's a man who says, where are these women at that you're talking about? Where are these women at that you're talking about? And the men, say, uh, the women say, where are these guys that you're talking about? They think I'm describing these unicorn freaks of nature. Like, where are the women who are compassionate and kind and, and feminine and, and sweet? And I'm like, what women are you dealing with? And then I see comments on my page and I'm like, these are the people that they're dealing with. There are a lot of self-centered people who are motivated by fear. Like I said, you can't you can't love on someone if you don't have enough. You don't have your full eight ounces. So you're you gotta be real stingy with them. I only got three ounces in the I actually might just have a little ring of tea. I don't even have a whole ounce of tea. So how am I gonna give to you? I I I don't even have a whole ounce myself, and I don't know when my next refills come in. I can understand. <laughs> you better go get there because I don't have anything else in me to give you. I'm holding on my darn self. When we know better, we do better. So hopefully this was helpful for somebody. But we gotta love, we gotta love, we gotta love. We gotta love each other. Because this world is so void of love. It is. It has a huge shortage of love. And so you guys should be little love supplies. Every time someone bumps into you, whoop, a little love came out, whoop, a little love came out. Little love sponges push into you, love comes out. Relationships can be so amazing if we know what's happening in the spirit realm and we just keep serving each other from the excess on the bottom of our saucer. By the way, that analogy was from um, Lisa Nichols, and I'm obsessed with it. She was talking about abundance, and I love it. Y'all know I love a metaphor and analogy. I love it. I'm very visual. So her stuff is amazing. All right, guys. It was fun hanging out with you. I want to close with this. I talk about the matrix a lot, right? You guys hear me talk about the matrix a lot. Matrix just means like the way this world system works. And... The thing is, is that it's all about measuring and mirroring. So this world system teaches you, you, you mirror. Okay. So if I see you giving to me, then I'll give back to you. But if I don't see you giving to me, I'm not, I'm going to stop. I'm not going to give back. It's about mirroring. And the other, the, 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 the scary thing about mirroring is that mirror sometimes is a carnival mirror. It's not even accurate. You ever been in that carnival mirror where it makes your head look really big or makes your, your body look really big or you look distorted like you have 15 heads? You cannot go off of the mirror principle, which is what the matrix teaches, because you are going to perceive. Oh, shout out. Hey, Jamaica, thank you. And inst, uh, is it Instav? I'm glad you're here too, love. Think about this. Imagine, because perception is everything. Imagine you had somebody come to your birthday party 
and everyone's dropping like a hundred bucks or maybe it's your wedding. Maybe someone's dropping like a hundred bucks, 50 bucks, whatever. And then you see a dollar and you're like, bro, who puts a dollar in this thing? Like in Italian families, uh, Italian weddings, they, they give a lot of money, like cold, hard cash, right? So let's say you're going through and you see a hundred dollars, you know, you see a couple fifties, you see all this money and you see a dollar. And you're like, yo. And then you find out years later that there was a little cousin of yours who only got 25 cents a week and they had to save up for a whole month to be able, or maybe it was $5, you know, whatever. But you realize that they had to save up and do without all the little treats that they used to buy with that, their allowance just to give you that dollar. Wouldn't that dollar have a totally different effect on you? It's all about perspective. But the way that the nature, the nature, the matrix system was set up, it's all about tit for tat, tit for tat. But your tit might not equal their tat. This is why we can't go off of perception. That dollar costs way more to that little boy than the other person who had $100. They could have dropped $100 and never noticed it. But that little boy, maybe that little candy every day was a big deal for him. We don't know what it takes people to be able to give what they're giving. And when we are harsh with them or we're, we don't show gratitude, like I was saying with the Kevin Gates story, you know, if a person doesn't feel appreciated, you have no idea the impact that it's making. It could be as simple as a man who never really went all out for a date. And this time he tried to get really creative and put something together. And he's like, you know what? I've been listening to these live streams and I want to have more quality time. I want to do a bike ride at the beach and, and I want to really just open up to her and really show her who I am. And he, he asked the girl out that he really been wanting to ask her out. And she said, you want me to do what? You want me to be in the hot sun riding a bike? This is the gym. If I wanted to work out, I would have worked out at the gym. No, I want to be in a fancy restaurant where I could dress cute and have my hair done. Ugh, as if. She assigned a value. She assigned a value and she had no idea who he was. There is so much that we don't understand. I've seen women who say that the guy's just being cheap. They project though. They project because they are taught that the more expensive the date, the more he, he means he, he's into them, the more he respects her. Not understanding that there are a lot of men, if they have it, the money is nothing to them. So the, it's actually easier for that guy to just drop some money because he thinks it'll quickly get her panties to drop. But if they took the time to get to know the character of both people, they would realize both guys have the same amount of money, but this guy values time more. It's a little bit of a tangent, a little bit of a digression, but I enjoy talking with you guys. Keep being love. There are so many out there who I think have uh, done the work. You guys are on your healing journeys. So many of you love God and therefore you're tapping in every day and you're getting your overflow of love to pass on. Keep going out and loving because this world needs it. This world is hurting. This world has lost hope. This world is devastated. This world is dealing with the most shallow vibrations I have ever seen. And so we need so much more of this love. So keep it going, you guys. Thank you for the love you showed me on this live. <laughs> and the two people who bought badges. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It will allow me to get something sweet for my daughter today. So thank you. All right, guys, until next time, tell someone that you love them.